Hi, everybody. It is Sunday, September 26th. Um, I just got off of a, a FaceTime call with Daryl Sturmer over in Leeds, England. Um, and I have a night off on the uh, Genesis tour. And so we were catching up on a whole bunch of stuff. And he was getting ready to head down to have dinner with a bunch of the guys. And uh, it's just great to see him. I really miss him. I, it's, uh, I'm really thrilled that they're out there, that they're getting great reviews for the show. And he said, you know, like he said, Nick, he said, is just absolutely killing it. Just uh, playing his ass off every night. And uh, that's so exciting, you know, to watch Phil's son evolving as a musician because he was great on the tour we did. And Daryl said, man, he's gotten so much better now. It's unbelievable. And any, I think it's because he grew a beard because now he's got a beard. Now he doesn't look quite as um, young as, as he did then. It was always great when Phil would introduce the band and he was always happy to introduce Nick because he said that would bring the average age of the band down considerably having at that time a 16 year old in the band with a whole bunch of old farts like us. But um, so it was great to see Daryl. We would every time we would ever check into a hotel like when we were on the road we'd immediately turn on the TV and see who could call the other one the quickest to say Law and Order's on channel like 44 or something like that. We were both kind of strung out on it. And uh, that was really fun. Um, I heard back from somebody I, I sent a, a song to yesterday and that they're thrilled with it. So that makes me glad. And then um, an artist uh, I did some a couple of tracks for in Finland just sent me uh, two roughs of the stuff I worked on. And man, it sounds great. I just I, I wish I spoke Finnish because the lyrics are all um, in, in Finnish. But um, I forgot about, you know, how they these tracks sounded and it's really turning out good. They're not done yet, but they're really good. Um, let's see what else. Um, I got another song to work on for somebody today. And then it's really kind of a nice, cool day here. It's like right now, it's probably in the uh, 70s out. So I'm going to really go out and, and assault the yard um, today. I got a lot to do. And uh, some other stuff. Um, but I was thinking, you know, once again, I mean, I'm always thinking music. Kind of story of my life. And um, I decided to come back and revisit some songs that I didn't talk about before with him, this artist. Um, but this was still one of the coolest projects I ever did. And it, it, it took on such a kind of a cult status in the same way like no other the Gene Clark album has that there's a certain reverence within the listening community for certain projects and when I had the opportunity to work with the great Billy Thorpe from Australia um, and we did the album Children of the Sun uh, it, it, it the people that got into it deeply got into it it's a it certainly is a headphone song you put headphones on and crank them up and this is really a, a, an oral, A-U-R-A-L, uh, experience um, for you, especially the, um, the, the, the kind of the epic of Children of the Sun with all the whole space thing that's going on and sounds flying and traveling. It, it was an amazing project. And um, we pretty much uh, cut the whole thing as a, uh, as a trio on it. And I am suddenly, oh God, Give me a second here. Oh, God, how, how can I be doing this? It's, this was the only chance I had to work with this. I am going to have to take one second here while we are talking, and I'm going to pull this up. Let me see what it was. It'll probably come to me once. And remember the drummer's name on this, and it's killing me. I don't, I can't believe that. Hold on. And it's great. I, I pull it up and 
things are coming up here. Um, talking about some rapper that did Children of the Sun. Okay, or maybe this will have it. It's not, not, nice to be visiting with me and see that I know what the hell I'm, I'm not doing. Um, hold on. Charge. There it is. I am so sorry. I was sitting here. It was right on the tip of my tongue the whole time. Alvin Taylor played drums on this. I'm sorry, Alvin. I, I was just thinking about this like 20 minutes ago, and I was thinking, yeah, me and Billy and Alvin. And all of a sudden here, we, we start up, and my brain completely destroyed itself. Okay, so we, you can edit all that out. Like when I start to say, what was the drummer's name? Go wash your car, detail the car, whatever you got to do, uh, and come back. I should have it by then. Um, now, the album was co-produced by uh, Billy Thorpe and, and Spencer Proffer. Larry Brown engineered the album. We did it at Pasha Studios, which was Spencer's studio down on Melrose, uh, right near Paramount Studios. Um Let's see, Bernie Grunman mastered it, who's one of the greatest of the of the uh, uh, the great mastering engineers. Um, and I think, yeah, they've got a little little thing they're saying here. It says, "Children of the Sun" is the third studio album by Australian musician Billy Thorpe, released in '79. The album spawned the singles "Wrapped in the Chains of Your Love," "Goddess of the Night," "Children of the Sun," and "Simple Life." The album peaked at number forty-four. On the Kent Music Report in 87, the album was partially reissued as Children of the Sun Revisited, featuring five songs from the original album, plus three newly recorded tracks for the compilation, uh, with East of Eden's Gate as the closing track. Um, uh, and it's that as of 2018, the original album has never been released on CD outside of Australia. Now, this is, it was just one of these things, I really, I was not familiar um, with Billy um, I did, until we met in the studio. And because uh, I had done a number of projects with Spencer in the past. And I walked, got into the studio, and here's this just wire, it, it, just this wiry guy, just kind of tough as nails, little guy in his leather and a big blonde mane and everything. And he was so, had such a vibe about him. And then I started learning that, you know, he was a, a child star in Australia. Um, he's had a long history in entertainment. Um, he had a, a group called the Aztecs, which was one of the biggest groups in Australian rock history. And when we toured, um, Alvin wasn't on the tour. Um, Gil Matthews was on the tour, who I'm still in touch with down in, in Australia, and I try to see him when I go down there. Um, and he was the drummer on, on that our tour, but he was the drummer in the Aztecs with Billy, and they, they had a long history. And, uh, but we just had, once we started and, and, and I, we realized the concept for this album, Children of the Sun, it was amazing. We brought in a huge amount of gear in the studio. I mean, it's the biggest bass rig I've ever recorded with in there. We just were saturating the room with sound. We had the drums up on a riser. I mean, we were treating it like it was full on performance in the studio. And when we finished the album, then we ended up uh, doing a, a tour, and uh, and it w it went great. I mean, I think our first gig was like Texas Stadium, and I think we played at Santa Monica Civic Auditorium. Went down to Florida, and played uh, some gigs down there. It was it was so great, and uh, eventually though it all you know it just came to a close. And then Billy, we actually had talked about doing a group uh, with Billy and myself and Mick Fleetwood and a couple of other people. And then Billy ended up moving back to Australia at that point and was continuing on um, with his music down there. And then it was tragic uh, that, uh, you know, I had heard that he was getting ready to go back out on the road, had just finished a new project. It was more like world music that he was into at that point. And he suffered a heart attack and passed away. And, uh, but his, his legacy, um, is is pretty deep, pretty profound, 
and uh, the, the people that were into this album just loved Children of the Sun. It was like, man, they would just get high, put the headphones on, and be gone. It was like it's one of those experiences. But there, you know, I, and I, a much earlier video uh, on my channel, I, I talked about Children of the Sun and played that. And uh, I thought I'd go back and play a few of the songs that that were really not in that, um, quite in, in in that same vein. They were more straight up stuff with him because I think the whole album is, was just a really remarkable experience, uh, especially cutting it as a trio. Like there's a lot of bass parts on this for me um, that I would have cut on Frankenstein, but then I came in and I had a Carl Thompson piccolo bass, and so I doubled a lot of bass parts with piccolo bass to make it sound almost like some kind of a weird eight string uh, instrument on it, ran some effects and stuff. And and Billy was like just, and he's such a strong guitar player and singer. Um, and I wish I had more projects with Alvin. I mean, I saw Alvin like a few years ago at a at NAMM show and we caught up on things. And I mean, he's a in-demand drummer and just a wonderful musician. We just... Uh, for some reason, this was our, our 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 one dance together. You know, he was we were our prom dates, and that was that was it. So, uh, um, here's a song called "Goddess of the Night," and this is me, Billy Thorpe, and Alvin Taylor as this Sunday morning brain is a little iffy. So, here we go. <laughs>
Back in 1979, pretty, pretty amazing. Um, there's a bunch of uh, videos of Billy on YouTube. Uh, it's well worth checking out. And I think there's uh, some snippets from our live show that we played um, that somebody filmed it. But really, really fun to revisit. But I'm sitting here thinking about the studio because um, it was just, if anybody knows the Hollywood area, um, when when Gower comes south and hits Melrose, if you turned right at the Astro Burger on the corner, Pasha was the next building over. And I remember we were there at about two or three in the morning working, and all of a sudden the building shook like an earthquake. And we went, what the hell is that? And we ran outside, and some guy, some drunk had been driving down uh, Melrose and crashed into the Astro Burger and uh, was basically went right through the front of it and his car stopped at the counter and he was sitting there like he was ordering from a, a drive through but there was no drive through he had created the drive through and then we heard the emergency vehicles and police and fire department and then next day the whole place was all boarded up because all the glass and everything was blown out of it but it was the weirdest thing to come out just see some guy sitting in his car in the in the Astro Burger so so here's a song called Dream Maker what Dream Maker definitely wasn't the guy sitting in the Astro Burger that that's for sure so here we go Billy Thorpe so this is with my piccolo and bass doubled up
kind of one of the things I really have always enjoyed about my gig is like yesterday Paul Williams, today Billy Thorpe, you know, the kind of the breadth of things I've had the opportunity to uh, um, play on and, and people I've gotten to play with is, is something I, I will embrace and enjoy for, for all my life because it's just it's been an interesting journey to say the least. Um, it's it's great. I was just thinking about Billy. He was such a a strong presence, such a real force of nature. It really breaks my heart that he's gone. But uh, well, he left quite a legacy behind. So here's here's one more here. This is called this is simple life. It's really a great track. Hold on, just a sec. Here we go. You take this conversation to the living. You will feel the warmth and love that is within it. Ooh, it's not a dream. Ooh, it's not a dream. I can't 
No, and also there were no charts or anything for any of this. We just got in the studio and started, Billy had his concept for the songs and we just started working up parts and, and, and crafting them. Um, but it was really just, this was a real gut level project. We really focused on just coming up with arrangements for the songs and then cut them. And when we finally figured out the arrangement on them, we pretty much got them in like a take or two. It was just a matter of like not coming into like chord sheets and everything. This was really a, this was all head work uh, on this project, which was one of the things that made it so much fun to be able to do that. You know, one more tune, because uh, everybody thinks about this Children of the Sun track, but there's so many great songs on this project, and a lot of it never got heard over here in the States. So here's Wrapped in the Chains of Your Love, and then I'll talk a bit. I miss you, Billy. I loved playing with you. Our tour was so much fun, and the hang was just unbelievably great. And you're one special guy in my life. I'm really proud that I got to be on this project with you. Um, I'm going to get running now and start taking care of things around here. Um, uh, it was interesting talking to Daryl 
um, he said on the Genesis tour, there's like 90 plus people out there on the road and they're being tested every two days. Um, everybody's healthy. Nobody's gotten sick. They're really living in pretty much a bubble. It's, even being with that many people, they're really uh, controlling uh, their movements and everything because uh, they just don't want to have any uh, COVID rearing its ugly head in any of this. So um, I'm grateful that I knew Tony Smith would you know, be as professional about this as possible because he's one of the best management people out there. And uh, so um, Daryl just said, man, no, it's, it's going good. No, I wish it, wish it was that way. I wish everybody was thinking that way. Um, but it's uh, you know, just heard about more people I know getting COVID today. Um, it's just, you know, it's just unbelievable. So get vaccinated. Just please, let's give, just, let's end this as best we can and not let you know, this continue to drag on like this. But my heart's with all of you who are sitting there on your weekend, sitting in ICUs and stuff, trying to save people's lives that really should never have been there in the first place. So, you know, it's got to be so hard for you. So my heart's with you. I'm going to get going. I'll be back tomorrow. Again, um, the Kelly Clarkson show that I'm going to be on is on this uh, October 15th. It's going to be fun to see how that turns out. And just a bunch of little things going on this week, and, but I got some more music to do and stuff. So you take good care. Have a great rest of your Sunday, whether or not you're in my time zone or Europe or wherever you know, time marches on. So uh, just sending all my best wishes to everybody and uh, check out Billy's stuff on, on YouTube. And, uh, and again, if you haven't done it, go f subscribe and friend up to the immediate family on YouTube and Facebook and all the social media. Um, really appreciate that. And uh, we'll talk soon. Okay, bye-bye.